Hi everyone. In today's video, I want to walk you through how we manage organic marketing tasks in our agency between a few people all the way from planning and drafting to actually publishing the posts on the various social media platforms. So first things first, we went through a bunch of different services such as Asana, um, Buffer, and the likes, we had them integrated with tools like Zapier, maybe some custom code stuff that we were trying out. Nothing really worked in the way that Airtable started working where we got to a point where we actually used Airtable for just about everything in the agency, um, not just social media and organic planning, mainly because of the automations that Airtable allows you to integrate. Other platforms have automations as well. I think the key differentiator here is that with Airtable, you have automations that you can actually custom code completely. And so I'll jump into that in just a sec, but let's go uh, through how we actually go about putting together um, some, some social media posts for our clients. So the first thing that happens is our content writer comes in, starts putting together some uh, drafts. So we can go ahead and simulate this. We'll call this the first post. And we'll add here a second post. And we'll add here a third post. Now, in each post, we have a concept. We have a media file, a content type, status for the post, Facebook copy. Instagram copy, Twitter copy, Pinterest title, Pinterest copy. We have here just a very basic for formula that tells us if our Twitter copy is over the character count. Uh, I think, I believe it's 280 characters or above. So if it's above, it'll tell us that this can't, uh, this is, you know, it'll be with a little X emoji. Um, Facebook media, Pinterest media, Instagram media, and so forth. And this goes on and on. And we have, you can really customize this to whatever you want. And then the go live date, which is another key important factor here. Uh, some of the automations are built around this go live uh, calendar here. So we'll get into all of this and um, schedule something out. So the first, po first post, let's uh, go into this uh, concept. So we'll say uh, here we plan to do X, Y, Z. Um, this is something I was actually testing out to automate some of the files, so we'll ignore that field for a sec. Uh, content type is social media. Post status is a draft. Facebook copy, so let's just grab some fake copy here. Sometimes it'll look different, so here it'll look like this, and since it's in Instagram, we might have um, just a few hashtags. And then for Twitter copy, like I said, it can only be so long. So here we'll eliminate and say that our Twitter copy is this short. So Twitter copy is good. Pinterest title for the pin. So let's just say this is one title, and then the copy can be whatever we want again. You get the idea here. Um, I can really just duplicate here another one, and we'll call this second post. So here we have two drafts. Now, uh, I should show that we have multiple layers of statuses here. So draft, design, needs review, ready to publish, and published. Um, as you see here, it starts with draft, and we're, we're grouped here by um, these statuses. We find that this is the easiest to kind of have a bird's eye view on the all posts. And I'll get into all the other ones and, and how we have this looking. So if I change this from draft to design, uh, it'll automatically move this over uh, into this bracket here, into design, into this group. and. Technically, there is an automation that we have going where, and it's not happening right now because this is just a fake account, a, a fake Airtable base that I created for the purpose of this video. There is an automation that would trigger and it would check if this is client one 
then and the status is design, then let me assign in this case uh, Emily. And if this is client two and it's under status design, then it might go to a different designer. Um, in some cases, we have multiple folks that are working on something, and so that's all kind of predefined. And we can automate the assignment that way they get notifications automatically and everything happens seamlessly without human interaction. And so in this case, say the content writer finished putting together the post and changed this to design, automatically it would assign the relevant person under the responsibility over, uh, where is it here? they get a notification automatically over here in the bell. Uh, and that could be also with emails if they have the mobile app and so forth. That way everybody is in sync on what's going on. Now, one of the most important ones, as I mentioned, is if we set this that it needs to go live, let's say on the 24th, and then we can actually say that we think this should go live at, uh, say, 10 a.m. We can fully customize this. We can actually type into here, 35 and so this also now could trigger something if all ducks are lined up correctly so we have a few checks that go into effect as soon as this goes into status ready to publish um, technically there's also needs review so once the designer finishes putting all the all the design pieces in um, in this case it would go they would add Facebook, Pinterest, a bunch of media files, because sometimes to the, you know, depending on the social platform, it could be different uh, dimensions. So they'll add everything. As soon as they're done, they will change this status to needs review. So this is a great example. If I have now something that's under, say, needs review, and I assigned it to myself here under my name, um, if I go under, if I were to log in with my account or say the designer, then they could each go in here. And in this case, I could log in and I can say, okay, let's see what I have under needs review under my name that needs my attention. Um, I can actually change this to see anything. So I can even change responsibility. I can change the grouping, everything. That way I can kind of have, um, different filtering and then you save it and you have different views is what we call this in Airtable. Um, you know, so in this case, Emily can have her own review, uh, her own view. I can have my own view and so forth. That way we're not seeing everybody's post because as you can imagine, when you're managing this for more than two, three clients, it can get pretty hectic under the all posts. But if you need to kind of, uh, focus in and, and hone in on your craft and your tasks, then you can just go in and see what it is that you have upcoming and you can filter it and sort it by whatever you want. That way you can tackle everything. So here's where Airtable can be super cool. Once this post status goes from needs review to ready to publish and our automations are always listening. And so when an automation checks all the boxes that we're waiting for, in this case, for example, it could be that we need it to be social media because we can have here also blog posts. So social media, it's in ready to publish. These boxes are all filled up. It's under limit for Twitter and so forth. If everything checks out, then an automation can trigger and it can actually be a full custom coded solution. So in our case, what we did is we have a small script here that we once everything lines up in the automation detects that uh, all looks good. So in this case, date and time has to be today. Post status is ready to publish. Client is client one content type is social media and so forth, whatever we decided, then we can go ahead and the next step would be that it automatically changes the status to published. And the next step is that it'll run a script automatically. In this case, it'll pull all the fields that we defined. And then in the script, it'll inject those fields into a zap with Zapier where all the magic happens. Um, and we can go from there to any social media or whatever we want. So in this case, we're actually encoding everything into the zap that way. On the Zapier side, some fields might be empty sometimes, maybe this client doesn't use Pinterest and so forth, but each Zap will inject all of this into every webhook that we actually call. And once all of this is done, then uh, everything is, is completed and that task is now under published. And so I'm not gonna turn this on because this is a fake table, but you get the idea. So 
as you can imagine, there's a ton of tasks happening here, automations. We, in, in our case, this is just a, a, a few of them, but um, it's fully loaded and there's a ton of automations that are checking stuff um, between all of us, designer, content writer, you name it, everybody can go in and check their own tasks. That way they see what's going on and they don't have to be in the macro level of seeing everything. Sometimes it's it's nice to be able to jump in here for a sec and do something. So let's jump to an example of how a client would be seeing this. So in this case, client one, we have some filters set in place. It's the client must be client one, post status must be ready to publish. In our case, we don't want clients to be able to see, and they're gonna see this calendar, we don't want them to be able to see um, you know, things that are kind of going down the funnel because sometimes something can go from draft, design, end up on needs review, and then we'll figure out that we actually don't like this idea or something in the world happened and it's just not a good post that we want to go live with or our client to see, so we'll end up scrapping it. And in this case, we don't want the client to see that. So they're only gonna see ready to publish and we can generate here a quick calendar link. This is a public link. We can modify some of the details of what they're gonna see, restrict it with the password and so forth. And we can also embed it into a different environment, whether that's a Notion environment. I know that a lot of folks use Notion to manage their some of their uh, client public facing data, or you can embed it into whatever system you're using, or just send them the link and tell them to take a look at it, up to you. Um, but th this is a cool link that you can share with the client and they're only gonna see what you actually defined here. So that's pretty nifty. Once you have a bunch of ready to publish posts, they can actually go in and see everything that they have coming up with their social calendar. And it's a pretty cool way to kind of not have to bother you to ask you, hey, what's coming up? Hey, did you get this done? If they send you a request, they can see it right here. So it's as easy as that. Now, another cool thing, speaking of client requests, is they can submit requests to you right from Airtable. And I won't go into it in this video, but you can create a form that allows your client to essentially feed you a bunch of ideas, inspirations, you name it. That way your team uh, doesn't even have to go back and forth with emails and so forth. Uh, the client sends a submission through the form, it automatically tags them, it goes into all posts and it assigns the relevant folks as soon as that submission is received. So it, it helps eliminate a lot of uh, client you know, emails back and forth and so on. So I hope this helped you understand the possibilities of Airtable between writing custom scripts and integrating with webhooks from Zapier and the likes. The possibilities are really endless. We did feel like we were somewhat limited with alternatives where with Airtable, the limitations just weren't really there. It was a matter of being creative and trying to figure out how are we gonna go about this so that way it's not too complicated and it's nearly fully automated and you know everyone knows where they're coming into the formula um, to just kind of keep the engine moving here. So if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is by hitting the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and thank you all for watching.